It's cold, so if you put the, if you use the blankets and cover up, that might be good. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Should we start our recitation? Page two. The more
to the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, nor of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, Secure from the Shakya plant, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When a supreme among humans who were born on this earth, you paced out seven strides and said, I'm supreme in this world. To you who were wise in my prostrate, with pure bodies, form supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame in the places in the three worlds, winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme sign, face like a spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. You are immaculate, three worlds and not. Incomparably wise ones, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you the one bound to vastness I prostrate. The purity which makes one free from attachments, the virtue which frees one from the lower realms, the one path to sublime pure reality, to that dharma which pacifies that prostrate. Those who are liberated and who also share the path of liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you, the sublime community and human virtue of prostrate. Do not commit any non virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a mirage, a flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the foe of false, and be delivered from samsara's ocean. Perturbed by waves of aging, sickness, and death. Mm -hmm. Page four Chimbalat, 
Page 11 in English. Thus I have heard once the Blessed One was dwelling in Rajariha and Vulture's Beak together with the great assembly of Brahmas and Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One was totally absorbed in the concentration that examines all phenomena of profound illumination. And at the same time, the noble lover of the the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, was engaged in the profound practice of the wisdom of Gandhiya, analyzing the five ideas by nature and beauty. Then, to the inspiration of the the venerable Shari Bhutra spoke to the noble the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, How should those of good family learn who wish to follow the profound practice of the wisdom Gandhiya? As he spoke in the noble level of the Vishwara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva replied to the venerable Shariputra, saying, O Shariputra, whatever son or daughter of good family wishes to follow the profound practice of the wisdom Gandhya, should look at it like this, and as in the five aggregates by nature and form is empty, emptiness is known, emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. In that same way, feeling, recognition, karmic formation, and consciousness are all empty. Therefore, Shariputra, all phenomena are empty without characteristics. They are unborn and unceasing. They are neither impure nor free from impurity. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no karmic formation, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. There are no spheres of the eye, up to no spheres of the mind. There are none of these, all the way up to the sphere of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, nor is there destruction of ignorance. There are none of these, all the way up to there is no old age in death, nor is there destruction of old age in death. Thus, there is no suffering, no cause of suffering, no cessation of suffering, and no path. There is no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, all Bodhisattvas hold to the wisdom gone beyond. And because there is no obscurity of mind, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond falsity, they reach beyond the bounds of suffering. All the Buddhas dwell in the three times by relying on the wisdom gone beyond, fully and clearly awakened to unsurpassed, most perfect and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the wisdom gone beyond, the mantra of great insight, the unequal and unsurpassed mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The mantra of the wisdom gone beyond is proclaimed this is how a Bodhisattva Mahasattva should learn the profound wisdom Gambia. Then the Blessed One arose from that concentration and prayed to the Noble Abhuditeshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Very good, very good, O son of good family, it is exactly like that. The profound wisdom gone beyond should be practiced exactly as you have said, and then the Tathagatas will rejoice. 
That whole gathering in the world with its gods, men, anti gods, and spirits, their hearts full of joy, praise the blessed one, praise the blessed one. So ends the noble discourse on the essence of the wisdom of Gandhi. Ani so today, the great treatise on the stages of the path of enlightenment may be embraced as teacher and as uh, and as student, uh, with the recognition that <clears throat> this precious human embodiment that is so uh, difficult to achieve has been achieved. If we can identify this precious human embodiment for what it is, then uh, we too will realize that we have encountered the, the Buddha Dharma. And furthermore, we have encountered a spiritual mentor who can direct us in the Buddha Dharma. So <clears throat> whether we undertake to practice or not depends upon each one of us, but should we choose to, then we have the most salubrious uh, conditions possible for that. And so then as we embrace this great treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment, supplicate and imagine that you will engage in the Bodhisattva trainings just as outlined here. Mm -hmm. Kandar <laughs> Now, in order to extract the essence from this precious human embodiment, it is vital to also consider the reality of there being preceding lives, a current life, and then lives to come. Uh, and we need to reflect on uh, what that entails. There is this life, and there are the preceding lives, and there are lives to come, and Consideration of those uh, is significant. <clears throat> now, if we consider the, the sequence of lives, if we think of our past lives, uh, we know that there's no alteration, no adjustment of what occurred during that life. Uh, for the present life, too, uh, we must recognize that much of it is predetermined by karma accumulated in the past. Now, if we consider our lives to come, the situation is different, and we can realize that the present moment is the very moment for alteration of the course that will be taken in future lives. <laughs> So 
So in this way, it is uh, lives to come that are of uh, primary significance, and it is this life in which we can determine the course those future lives will take. And so as practitioners of the Buddha Dharma, uh, it is incumbent upon us to focus upon this life and how the course of future lives may be changed through this life. <laughs> だせちまでやぼよんされよんさまれかわたおですなたねんぐみるでだおです。だせちまでやぼよんされよんさまれかわたおですなたねんぐせんでるからでちおです。じゃさんていいで。あねたねんまなんぞちまやぼごぐよば
if you analyze past lives and become convinced of them. <clears throat> then as we consider future lives, first reflect on past lives and acknowledge uh, and grow in conviction that that they have uh, they have existed and that our present circumstances follow from them. And if that is the case, that our present circumstances follow from pa past circumstances in the future too, uh, will proceed accordingly. And if one thinks in that way, uh, then too, we will realize that it's no other, there's no other individual responsible for the course of events apart from oneself. And so uh, develop the, the, the conviction and the awareness that it is this way, so you take responsibility yourself. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> And <laughs> <laughs> Regarding future lives, there are there are different uh, demonstrations of their their likely existence, and <clears throat> uh, it suffice it to to simply look at our our uh, present surroundings and uh, a world in which there are populations of, of different species that are that increase and then decrease and increase and then decrease and so there are changes in population around us that we see and so we can we can surmise that there are conditions present and then and then there's there's a change and so it it may be that we don't we cannot uh, this isn't a uh, uh, logical uh, proof of of uh, their existence but it is enough to to develop a, a sort of uh, confidence in in its likelihood and and then from that at least you may you may develop uh you may that may be the basis for consummating your 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 dharma practice for bringing it to fulfillment uh <clears throat> and the fulfillment of the dharma practices is, is especially through the the behaviors and the conduct of the bodhisattvas and however that requires considerable merit and it isn't therefore available to everybody. But if that merit store is not available for the practices of the Bodhisattva, then the middling path in which individuals liberate themselves at the very least from samsara is available. And at the very least, uh, one may prevent themselves from uh, falling to a lower rebirth in lives to come. Uh, and that being the, the path available for the beings of inferior capacity. So in any case, uh, those may be uh, those practices practices may be engaged in uh, based upon this precious human embodiment uh, but best of all is to train in the in the uh, way of the bodhisattva and bodhicitta <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Lan manorma çatsam döme çebe gel. Da peçe dedin de tanju lan bin çin bu ustad peçe nane tam peçe nane de nana dur la dur lan dewa. Hani lozun çin lan çi dewa. Hani be de 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 çanju lan çeşir basa. Çanju lan de çanju sülü sanji ni koma. Hani lan çeşir basa sülü tela doya gözü bak. Dönme gel ne peçe çanju çanju çin bu di. Hani da de nana dur şebe kapsu baba çatı yore sun. Now we have before us the, the great treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment. Uh, it is a text in which the unmistaken uh, path uh, is outlined, uh, is presented, and it is a text that is, is exceedingly practical and handy, uh, and it's understandable. And enlightenment refers to the, to the state of Buddhahood, and this is an outline Uh, a reliable outline of the path to Buddhahood. Mohoto se ta dinen chanju lamber de machi mo de khande se ore se na ta dinen chamu go de senjan de shuba ina ani jave sunra thamje ki ne du ba sange chunde de ki ta sun ho ta pendi ta kangde sun me de ta thanda tu ingu tu du ba se ani dhyan pe shinda chen bolle do ta thome se ta ma do kung du sa yena me na ta samu tonyi te be lamji pe je ki chodo ki wa de ko bolle do sun sha ore Changyuk-sem-di-kol-nyam-yen-chitang-yun-tawa-tong-me-son-oh-kho-nyi-ki-kung-su-chang-pe-se-we-kho-ra-nyi-ki-se-be-lam-se-we-an-e-nam-ba
Ani ripusunsa bak yavaşça bir süt tembela diyor deniye bir süt yine tembala çavaca bir süt sunma ne? Daha sadece tamboni onu kazan şey çavar. Daha tembala çavaca bir süt ya. Ani yavadır dedi de böyle dedi niye cani yavadır dedi de böyle süt kazan çaza da derin oldu. Çocuğun ani böyle da tembala kandespey yine bozdu manşe oluyor ya sonuç. The first major section showing the greatness of the teachings author in order to establish that it is of noble origin has three further subsections. The first, those three sub subsections are how he took rebirth in, in an excellent lineage, how upon the basis of his excellent lineage he gained good qualities, and third, having gained those qu good qualities, what Atisha did to further the teachings. The first two subsections are completed already. Now we resume the third section, which has two further subsections. What Atisha did in India to promote the Buddha Dharma, and what he did in Tibet to promote the Buddha Dharma. We have finished the first subsection, what he did in India. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean, George, that's good. I mean, Grandma, the child, can they say what is the number that did? Now, Don't <clears throat> Regarding uh, the great Atisha's activities to promote the Buddha Dharma in, in Tibet, we can ask ourselves fairly what did he do? Uh, and there are five, roughly five uh, sections that describe uh, what he did. And the first is an account of the purpose behind his visiting Tibet. And so to begin there, we can, we can look to Tibetan history a bit to find some context. Originally in Tibet, the, the native indigenous uh, religion was not uh, the Buddha Dharma, but the Bön, uh, the Bön religion. Uh, and <clears throat> so the kings of, of Tibet, uh, saw to, thought to adopt the Buddha Dharma of India and to import it into, into Tibet. And they first did that through, through inviting great pundits from India, uh, especially Shantarakshita, who brought along with, well, with him uh, the great Guru Padmasambhava and the, the Dharma King and uh, Shantarakshita and Guru Padmasambhava are those three original uh, individuals responsible for the early transmission of the Buddha Dharma. In the meantime, following the first transmission or the early transmission of the Buddha Dharma to Tibet, <clears throat> uh, some of the teachings of the Buddha Dharma uh, began to decline, uh, particularly uh, elucidation of the profound view of emptiness uh, was no longer uh, clearly presented uh, or clear, clear uh, to, to Tibetans. And uh, the early Buddha Dharma declined. And then it was part of the resurgence or the later transmission of the Buddha Dharma uh, that uh, the great Atisha participated in. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
<clears throat> the great Atisha in his activities in Tibet began to clarify wrong views uh, held in Tibet. And there was quite, quite a bit of controversy uh, regarding the teachings of the Buddha Dharma in Tibet. One of the sources of controversy was disagreement between those who are part of the foundational vehicle or the Shavakayana and Mahayanists. <clears throat> those, in, those following the foundation vehicle or the Shravakayana uh, would, would criticize Mahayanists as not following uh, the Buddha Dharma, the actual Buddha Dharma. And then just the reverse, the Mahayanists would accuse the, those, Shravaka, Shrav, those in the Shravakayana vehicle of not following the actual teachings of the Buddha. And so in Tibet, there, there, there were uh, some who, who followed the Vinaya and the, the teachings in the sutras, but then rejected wholesale the Mantrayana. And then there were those who were practicing the Mantrayana who would reject wholesale the Vinaya tradition and the sutra tradition. And so it, it was this uh, model of views that uh, the great Atisha had to clarify. Now many uh, Indian pundits travel to Tibet. It is said that some 552 or so uh, travel to Tibet. But uh, of those many pundits who travel to Tibet, there was no guarantee that, that each and every one was transmitting the authentic Buddha Dharma. There were some who, who uh, visited Tibet just to be remunerated in gold for, for doing so. And each would come with his own or their own uh, individual way of uh, explicating the Buddha Dharma. So there were many different competing explanations for the meaning of the Buddha Dharma, many wrong views, and this required uh, visits by, by uh, great pundits. Now each each visiting pundit to Tibet had their own uh, unique way of explicating the Buddha Dharma. And <clears throat> some would some would say, oh, this Madriana is the very best. Uh, it is the most sacred. It is the most important. Pour me a pint of beer and I'll teach you the, the, the Madriana. And, and then others would say, oh, it's this, it's this, and then it ought to be practiced in this way. And so there was uh, a great diversity and, 
in competing misleading views. And it was because of this uh, situation that Atisha's visit to Tibet was required in order to clarify all the confusion. So today, uh, the the custom in the larger monasteries. I'm not familiar with the smaller monasteries, but in the in the major monasteries, uh, the the custom is uh, for there to be a, a geshe examination and then the conferral of geshe degrees. And uh, with a geshe degree, the 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 most distinguished geshe uh, in first position uh, is generally assigned a government position as um, uh, abbot of a major monastery, as the Gandhan Tipa, the throne holder of Gandhan, uh, but a government position of the highest highest order. And then the second position uh, geshe in the geshe class will ordinarily return to their to their birthplace, uh, their their homeland and uh, teach the Dharma there as the abbot of a, a major monastery at the, where they're from. And then the Geshe in the third position, <clears throat> if, if they have a monastery, will stay in the monastery. And if not, then they'll go on retreat. But that's the, that's sort of the custom in the major monasteries. <laughs> Now, now things have changed. Originally, they were as I described moments ago, but now. Things have changed, and usually the the most distinguished geshe, the first position there, will will be invited to Europe or or to the U.S. and travel there, and then those in the second position will will uh, inevitably stay in the monastery, and so too will the those uh, in the third position, and there's no really stopping uh, the sway of uh, Europe and and the uh, USA and and bringing uh, uh, teachers. What <laughs> so it was uh, before too in in India the most distinguished uh, pundits uh, 
would very well uh, with good intentions, pure motivation and excellent education travel to Tibet and transmit an authentic Buddha Dharma there. <clears throat> but then uh, second rate uh, teachers too, uh, looking for profit would go to Tibet. And then those would be the individuals responsible for misleading views, uh, transmitting mis misleading views uh, to, to Tibetans. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, it is the same way these days, uh, there are your distinguished, uh, uh, well-educated uh, geshes of, of the most distinction. And then there are, there are others of uh, less, uh, less well-educated and all alike are, are likely teaching. And you may listen to, to teachings from all of them, but you must, must do so carefully so that you're able to discriminate between what is authentic and, and correct and what is not. But mind you, I'm not saying that I'm of the of the uh, first class, first order of of, of geshes. I'm I'm not saying that. Uh, those my contemporaries uh, in my cohort cohort stud, when we studied together, uh, those of the first class, the the most distinguished, are now the abbots and the uh, teachers in the monastery. And at very most, I could say that I'm second rate. え、ちょちょちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ
uh, actually returned to Tibet, and they are uh, the translator Rinjin, the great translator Rinjin Zangpo, and the lesser translator Lekpe Shero. Now those two who returned to Tibet weren't able to, to bring Atisha back, uh, but they were able to study while in India with many distinguished pundits. And then when they returned, they were able to give an account of the state of uh, education in India and convey that, that in India, there were many uh, distinguished pundits. And especially there, there was among them, one in particular who would be of great benefit to Tibetans, uh, one uh, Deepamkara Sri, uh, also known as uh, Atisha. And if, if uh, they were to invite uh, Atisha, that would be beneficial. So this story they brought back, or rather this account they, they brought back to Tibet. <laughs> And so with that, the, the king of, of Tibet was decided that they would invite Atisha. And so, and so uh, through uh, representative, through the representative Sondru Senge, uh, he conveyed, uh, the king conveyed uh, gold uh, as part of the invitation to Atisha. So the Tibetan king uh, made plans to, to himself uh, invite and bring, escort uh, Atisha back from India to Tibet. And at that time, there was no way to, there were no, there was no money apart from the actual gold, gold and, and uh, silver. And so it, they, uh, the king planned to, with gold and silver, uh, entice Atisha. And so he traveled uh, down through Tibet on his way to India, but, but in, in Nepal was uh, arrested or, or detained by the Nepalese king. And at that time, there were many who were invested in, in preventing the Buddha Dharma from flourishing in, in Tibet. And among these uh, characters was this ne Nepalese king. And the Nepalese king put uh, Chanchubu, uh, this uh, king, in prison. Yeshu. Oh, Yeshu. Sorry, Yeshu. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's 
So it was Yeshio, Yeshio who was uh, imprisoned in Nepal by the Nepalese king. And the Nepalese king said, uh, it's up to you. You need to uh, forsake your Buddha Dharma uh, if you wish to go free. And uh, so Yeshio remained imprisoned. And uh, his cousin, uh, his uh, niece, his nephew, his nephew, uh, Jangju, uh, Jangju uh, visited him in, in uh, prison there and uh, told him what the, the Nepalese king required for his release, which was that uh, first he bring, bring 100 uh, pieces of gold and, uh, and he did that. He, nevertheless, the Nepalese king didn't release uh, his uncle. And so then the Nepalese king demanded uh, the uncle's full weight, that is Yeshua's full weight in gold. Uh, and uh, Yeshua brought that together. Jangchuba, the, the, uh, the um, nephew, brought that together, that amount in gold. But then the Nepalese king said to free your uncle, you need his weight in gold plus the weight of his head and uh, in gold. And so then uh, Yeshua would have gone out to collect that too, but then concluded that, that all of this, uh, this searching for, for gold in order to re reach his uncle uh, may not end up, and the likely conflict that would ensue uh, if, if he were to fight to free his uncle might be uh, not, not uh, practical. And so he said to his uncle, why don't you, while you're in prison, why don't you single-mindedly supplicate the three jewels, consider the karmic causes for your present circumstances? <laughs> ジャンジュジェイシュマコナビアシュジャンジュジェイシュラディエシュラ。うん。アニユシュマネンデカナナスナ。タチャナデペテセテネコボレス。セルセネネコボレアニセルディガジコルテネアニディグマディセルディキニ
And uh, so John Chogo said, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to collect the gold and bring it back at the, the amount that you, you require and to release him. And so he began to do that. Uh, <clears throat> but then uh, his, his uncle, uh, Yeshe, who was in prison, uh, they said, instead of uh, go about collecting all this gold, but it's not worth it to give it to this Nepalese king after all. Uh, it's not worth it to give it to him. Uh, I may die in prison, but, but I have no re regret, regrets. Uh, instead, I'd, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to make sure that uh, Tibet is able to follow the authentic Dharma. And so take, the, take, all this, take this gold instead of to the Nepalese king to India to invite a pundit back to Tibet to ensure that Tibet has uh, authentic Buddhism. <laughs> so with that, with that decision, then Zhang uh looked to find who it would be who would go to uh, India to bring back a Tisha uh, or bring back a Pandit. And he determined that the translator Nakso Lozawa, Nakso Lozawa uh, would be beneficial and able to do that and employed him to do so. <clears throat> and then Nakso Lozawa uh, traveled by foot to India, spending eight, eight or nine months uh, in travel, and first arrived at uh, Vikarma Lashila, uh, and there met Sondru Senge, who had been sent before him, and he and Sondru Senge together were able to hurry, uh, hurriedly, secretly, uh, invite Atisha to Tibet. <clears throat> Not so Lotsawa traveled to, to India, uh, but it wasn't as though it, it was easy for him to, to bring Atisha back to Tibet. It wasn't easy at all, partly because uh, the great Atisha was old, had grown old by that time. And uh, uh, and uh, so at, he was around 57 at the time, so he, he, he was um, he was older and uh, he was responsible for overseeing the great monasteries in India, including Nalanda. And furthermore, other elder senior um, senior uh, officers, in, such as the elder Akara, were very strict. And so it wasn't easy for Atisha to, to uh, leave India. And Anakso Lotsal came with a great deal of gold uh, and I had to work hard to persuade uh, Atisha uh, to leave India. <laughs> Yeah, 
这个是我们的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人生的人
uh, to consider. And therefore, we should really uh, rejoice in our present circumstances. That's our responsibility to rejoice in that. When the great Atisha ultimately arrived in Tibet, it was uh, by virtue of uh, the work of Nakso Lotsawa, uh, who, who conveyed him back to, to Tibet, and also due to the efforts of Zhang Shu. And so when, when the great Atisha arrived, of course, his purpose was to teach the Buddha Dharma, and that was, uh, that was the reason he had been invited. And <clears throat> so it was in Zhang Shuba who first supplicated, first requested teachings from Atisha, and uh, he presented his, the need uh, in Tibet as a need for some humble instruction in karmic causality, uh, nothing too lofty, nothing having to do with uh, the secret mantrayana and initiation, but rather something of social consequence, uh, some elucidation of karmic causality. And because of the, the humility of uh, this request, uh, Atisha was gratified uh, to find that, that there was someone here uh, requesting uh, teachings who had great humility. And so he, he identified Zhang Chogo as someone of humility uh, deserving these teachings. Oh,就是那长久浪迹专门在的，你不要了，但对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，
Now, what exactly was it that Atisha did in Tibet? Well, he eliminated wrong views and he established the, the tradition of the stages of the path. Uh, he established a, an authentic Buddha Dharma that has remained in Tibet lasting until the present time. So he did that. And he also he also purified and, and reestablished proper conduct, the proper training and the three higher trainings. Uh, the very uh, tradition of training first established by uh, Shantarakshita and Padma Sambhava and the uh, Tibetan Dharma King Songsen Gambo uh, during the first transmission of the Buddha Dharma. Uh, all that which was established in that first uh, transmission, Atisha reinforced and stabilized. So the great Atisha uh, reinforced the, the, the proper training in the three higher trainings, according to the first transmission of the Buddha Dharma, and then went on also to, to make authentic and uh, reliable uh, the practice of composing Shastra in Tibet and <clears throat> made sure uh, that for uh, Shastra to be composed, the three customary excellences be present in that scripture in order for it to be published. And those three excellences are that the author first be, be fluent in the five sciences. Second, that uh, the author be, a, be connected to the transmission of practice uh, through lineage gurus. And then third, that the author have a direct uh, encounter with a uh, tutelary deity. So ultimately, it is it is best if these three excellences are present in an author of a, of a shastra, but it's not necessary that all so all three present would be extraordinary. Uh, but if one were present, that 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 alone would be enough to make the the shastra uh, commendable. Well, yeah, 
તે જુસ્સો ભેગી નિવૃત્તિ લતેને અને તત સાજી જે કોવતેનો ફમ નિવૃત્તિ ન ખાડે યોસ ના સતને દિલે આમ તા નામ કો નામ સો દો તત પેજ નામ તો યો મળી ને તત જે દો સમતા દો સુન જ બોર તત ન ઈદમ નહી શે સો હમ દીદવા દા તેનો ફમ નિવૃત્તિ ન તત મો ઈદમ નહી જે સો સો આસ તન તો તત નામ પેજ તત તો મની કે તા દા છા જુ સિમ કે તા દા અને ભગે તત સો સો મિલે જે શી જે વઈ ને તત તે જે તો મઈ ન યા અને ખરે કોસ ન ઈદમ નહી <clears throat> related to this is uh is the establishing a, a custom whereby an authentic transmitter of uh, the intent of the buddha uh did that transmission especially uh having the qualification of having an encounter with a tutelary deity so that uh when that author if it's an, an author of a, a shastra or that teacher if someone who teaches directly to students so that they have the ability to uh provide instruction in in uh, emptiness and the generation of bodhicitta uh those who are following a deity uh are are qualified to do so ઓ <laughs> so it was that uh individuals with with an encamp who had the experience of direct vision of a of a deity were particularly uh Uh, qualified to provide instruction and we find on page 42 here in the uh, great treatise uh an excerpt from the verses of praise by Nakto Lotsawa uh that says due to having visions and receiving permission from the glorious Avajra Trisamaya Vyuharaja the hero Lokesh uh, Lokeshvara the noble and venerable tara and so forth he listened always to the excellent teachings of the profound view and the vast deeds of compassion either in dreams or in person oi bodhi jeta kharna vidhi shiva ki ne thagi eh kaje kurana jesus suma kund resus and this is evidence that uh, atisha was uh, was fluent in and followed the <clears throat> the tutelary deities of the four classes of tantra ઓદાત ઓદિંગ <laughs> so there we find in in the the list of tutelary de- deities the deities here in this verse uh we find deities from the four classes of tantra the glorious avaja and trisamaya uh you haraja are from the unexcelled yoga class the hero lokeshvara and the venerable tara 
are found in, in uh, both the uh, both of the lower classes of uh, Tantra. And then in the profound view and the vast deeds of compassion uh, shown to Atisha in dreams and in person, uh, that exposure to the, that instruction in dreams and in person is related to the highest uh, yoga Tantra practices. <laughs> <clears throat> the the quality of the author of a shastra being member of an uninterrupted transmission uh, from mm. from uh, of uh, gurus in the lineage uh, is present. Uh, Atisha is qualified in that way. Uh, <clears throat> the transmission, the uninterrupted transmission is of two kinds, an ordinary kind and the extraordinary kind. The ordinary transmission, the uninterrupted transmission in which Atisha is the head of a long transmission uh, going back. Uh, it goes back in the, in the, uh, the Paramitayana uh, to uh, Manju Gosha, Manju Sri, uh, who is progenitor of the profound view, uh, which passed down through Nagarjuna and uh, Kulika and down to Atisha. The view, uh, rather the transmission of uh, extensive view begins with the Maitreya, uh, is passed down to Asanga, Asanga to Serlingpa and on uh, to Atisha. So these two, uh, these two lineages within the lineage of the within the transmission of the, of the Paramitayana are present uninterruptedly in Atisha. Any <laughs> <laughs> within the within the uh, Mantrayana's unbroken lineage, uh, which reaches uninterruptedly, uh, Tisha, uh, there are five uh, there are five uh, blessings or five streams. Uh, they are the the Mantrayana stream of the father ta father tantras the Guya Samadra, the mother tantras the Chakra Samvara, uh, the Ati Yoga tantras the Bhairava tantras, and then the 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 uh, the blessings of the Kadampa uh, practice. Uh, <laughs> The, the scriptural support for uh, Atisha's for, for Atisha being described as having these uh, qualities or being uh, holding these transmissions, these lineage lineages is found in Naksalotsawa's uh, verses of praise, 
in the verse on page 43, the gurus on whom you always relied had achieved spiritual attainments. They were many, Shantipa, Selimpa, Padra Bodhi, Jnana Shri, and in particular, you possessed instructions on the profound view and the vast deeds passed down over the generations from Nagarjuna. Uh, there are 12, uh, especially enumerated, 12 uh, teachers. <laughs> now, the qualification of being proficient in the five sciences we've already described as part of the way in which uh, uh, Atisha became uh, knowledgeable based on uh, his being of noble origin. <laughs> So this shows us that that the meaning of the of all of the scriptures uh, is condensed here because the author is capable of condensing the meaning of, of the scriptures, uh, capable of doing so because he has these qualifications described here. And the scriptures for whom these were intended, it is said that uh, there are there were five uh, students of Atisha's who ended up being equal to him in the mastery. Atisha had in the many regions of Tibet and Kam, Amdo, and elsewhere many different uh, student followers. <clears throat> so from the many students, among the many students that uh, Tisha had in Tibet, three especially distinguished themselves uh, as as uh, gaining qual uh, qualities equal to his, mastery equal to his. And those three are Tromtomba, uh, Gyawa Jungne, and Lodin Shero, these three. And the in particular, Dromtompa uh, was the main disciple uh, through whom this transmission of Atisha's uh, instruction uh, is uh, brought to us. <laughs> So with that, then <clears throat> we've more or less covered uh, the greatness of the author. And so we'll leave, we'll, we'll conclude the section on the greatness of the author here then. And we, will, we can begin <clears throat> the next larger section showing the greatness of the teaching in order to engender respect for the instructions. <clears throat> 
Now, to be to ultimately bring the consummation one's practice, it is uh, vital to to listen to the biographies, to consider the bio biographies of of uh, the gurus, and then to follow follow their example and emulate them. <clears throat> so then we'll stop here for today and next week we will, we will begin this major section on showing the greatness of the teaching in order to engender respect for the instructions which itself has four major subsections <laughs> Now, if there are questions, we can have a question and answer now. My question is about, thank you, Kishila. Yeah. My question is about how, um, how was he able to confront wrong views across Tibet without creating further discord. Specifically when people are having so many disparate views, what was it about the way in which he taught that quelled the conflict and the discord? Is there something specific to the, the yeah, just what was his method for teaching in a way where there was so much conflict and you don't you know, young con or a tisiki selcha nang dang, uh, Jesse Gap dang, uh, Denzogi, uh, Denzogi, Kingi, uh, Lota Denzo, Sang Drobra, and in a the Atisiki Jesse Gap dang, and the church ten dang, and mix our check carriere, Rains and Chita, the and in Yokra Mambo Yosa de Laya, uh, the cell and a Jesse, and a Gabna. Any Carissa Gapa Gapkin, any Jungdan Jungrua, Yenayam, Perla, any Atishigi, any Yakojene, the Lotta Denzo, and a sound tuber, and a sound, and a Kongi Kichu Dendo Yurube, Mixer Kichu. That number is not what I told. I told the law was surely Yanga Tasho less than what. あの、<音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽> And then you would be curious, not well, not chulu with Tony. Dot and not, so there, there are three three points uh in the Buddha Dharma, positions regarding philosophical view, uh, when they are incorrect, are uh, the most problematic. 
the most problematic view that, that uh, presented itself in Tibet was that of the Chinese Hasham, uh, which were proponents of a view of emptiness that was the view of bringing or having nothing at all in mind, uh, being engaged with nothing at all. That engagement with nothing at all uh, was construed as emptiness, and that was a problematic wrong view. <clears throat> Atisha was able to clarify this particular wrong view. Another problematic view in Tibet was that the sutra yana and the mantra yana were diametrically opposed to one another. And what Atisha did was clarify that in one person, one person could practice both, that they could be integrated in one person and made that clear. And then that, that, that uh, helped to, to correct view. And then third, <clears throat> in Tibet, the Mantrayana, stewing in the Mantrayana were all sorts of, of strange behaviors that uh, uh, were apparently justified by the Mantrayana, such as uh, drinking alcohol and uh, taking a, an actual uh, sexual consort and things like that. And never did Atisha say that lay down strict laws or rules regarding this, but he countered the confusion with, with the blessings of his lamp for the path to enlightenment. And by the virtue of the bl blessings therein, uh, the confusion was quelled. And the fourth point, uh, Atisha, Atisha made uh, clear that for the practice of the Mantrayana, there were there were necessary preliminaries, uh, indispensable preliminaries, and they were uh, the ascertainment of the right view and the generation of bodhicitta. Uh, he made plain that there was no training in the secret Mantrayana without these, without these two. <laughs> Uh, this uh, six paramita is uh, a common test for both sutra and tantra. And uh, but uh, right now there's a lot of people who didn't get any six paramitas teaching before, but they already did some requirement or initiation. So they started to practice tantra, you know, practice. So do you think this kind of person need to take the you know the practice for six parameters first and then going for the the Yamlin taken Mambo Yur. The partisan Juki Korlea Kayang Majanki and Dende Yena Mutune and a Sanga in Yamlin di Chechogre, Chechogi Mare. Got the partisan Juki Korlea Kayang Majanki Yena Yakshudi Karre to Gone Yangyar, partisan Juk, Janga Derebe, Yamina Mutune and a Sanga in Yamlin and a Chechogrebe. That's the 
Now, in the practice of the Mantrayana, within that practice, uh, the extraordinary, uh, you might you might clarify there being an ordinary and an extraordinary Mantrayana practice. Now, within that ex extraordinary uh, Mantrayana practice, uh, we include practice in the mother tantras, the father tantras. <clears throat> and for those practices, it's absolutely necessary to, uh, to have in place your, your foundation of the six perfections. It's absolutely indispensable and necessary. But there's another class of uh, uh, Mantrayana practice that is common. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the uncommon practice of the mother and father tantras, but the common practice uh, shared with Hindu, Hindu practitioners in which there's the Mantrayana practices of recitation, the Mantrayana practices of meditation on, on winds and bindu, and, uh, and that, that does not require uh, the preliminary of the six perfections. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> so for uh, the Mantrayana with its generation stage and perfection stage, and such uh, Mantrayana practice absolutely requires uh, preliminary foundation in the six uh, paramitas. <clears throat> this is to set it apart from the, the ordinary practices. So what is required for the generation and perfection stages is uh, considerable familiarity with uh, the view of emptiness. Uh, that, that is uh, essential. And then with that, uh, deity meditation and what it entails may be, may be engaged with. So when you talk about the Mantrayana, when you're talking about the Tantrayana, Father Tantrayana, that means the highest uh, yoga time. We, we have four level, but the mother and father is only belong to the highest level. Uh, Yes, that's right. <clears throat> when one uh, fixates the mind uh, upon, upon bodhicitta as method, and from that generates uh, the aspect of the deity, that is father tantra. And when one fixates upon, uh, one fixates upon wisdom, the wisdom aspect, and generates in the aspect of the de deity, that is mother tantra. These two are, are the... Uh, two primary uh, tantra forms in the unexcelled yoga tantra. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
、ミチゴは、ミチゴは、どこだって、トニトシャルのマスメンタル、トニデータ、ヒボスモルミデータ、ミチゴは、どこのマスメンタルです。オーニャネスのデータレッスン、ユミシャルにパルシマスゴ、パルシマユミシャルのユミシャルのコロデータ、カンティキギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギギ Uh, when the mind fixates upon or takes as its object、uh, emptiness, then from that, all of the vehicles, the three, the three vehicles, the, the, the,、uh, all three vehicles from the Shavakayana upwards, their qualities may be generated from taking as the object of meditation emptiness. Now, when one takes as the object of, med-、uh, and for that reason, taking the object of meditation as emptiness it- itself in the Tantra、uh, gives it the name, the Mother Tantras, for all three vehicles, good qualities may be generated from that. From taking, from taking Bodhicitta, the method, as the object of meditation from which the deity aspect is generated, <clears throat> because that only gives rise to the, to the Mahayana. That it is called the Father Tantra. And so we have these two names, Mother Tantra and Father Tantra, because just as from a father, if the father is a king, if the father is a Brahmin, then the prince will be a king or the prince will be a Brahmin. But if the mother, but if we take the mother, the mother may give rise to any, and that especially any of these three vehicles.、Right. And then we also say, we also call the The Prajna Paramita, the mother Prajna Paramita, because all good qualities come from uh, uh, that mother Prajna Paramita, so it's called the mother. And the world of Christ with us. And、uh, His Holiness always, always teaching the three paths of the principle, you know. He will say that when you practice the Tantra, you will、uh, visualize the, the moon disk as the、uh, Bodhicitta. But、uh, you will visualize your f- view of emptiness as,、uh, as a Vajra, and the Vajra becomes become your deity. right? So that means、uh, the deity is coming from the point of emptiness. So, this the point of emptiness is the same wisdom as、uh, wisdom from the mother. Oh, yeah. ギョーラムチェギーカトゥイエナヤアネラムツーナムスンニンテンチェネナンギドアソギドアアギネギョーラムチェギーギューギコーラヤスンジュナンドザンバラタテンジェチタンテンジェスンギョーレ Dawid Dendi, Dawid Dendi, Dawid Dendi, and the Changchuki Sim, and the Yimbe Mugres, Mugres, and Sungure. Then they are Tom Nidi, and the Dorjedi, and the Dawid Dengi Gana, Gana Kube Dorjit Day, and the Tom Nidi Tunde, and the Yinsha Chigres, and Sungure. That then they are the Dorje, Dorje Degi Nampa. Ti hlasu gyur, hlasu gyur drogu roe. Da, ti luk di shir sana, ti magyur be. Ti di 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 ma, ti 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 di di ma, トニー・タワーディメナ、パコメティのトリウムをティシューマ、タチャンジュセンディ、トニー・タワー・ヤゴキュレキア、チャンジュセンボーラ、チャンジュセンキュレキア、ニジュンダス、ニジボーラ、コトキュデロワ、ピシェ、タディ・パジュー、ディ・ナドナのトーチェゴ、ユデジソワ、タチュンモデラ、アドディ・ファゴン・ジュジャンバ、マドディ・ペディオ、ファゴン・コブラドワー、ペマドワー、ワール・ペマ。でもかなダウェティ、ニメティ、オズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズスズス
<clears throat> now that that uh, sequence for the generation of the deity is come to both the mother and the father tantras. Now, just to ad address your your comment on the three the three principal aspects of the path too, uh, <clears throat> the the uh, emptiness uh, a <clears throat> proper view uh, regarding emptiness is essential. Uh, supporting uh, correct realization of emptiness is uh, bodhicitta, the generation of bodhicitta support. It's a supportive condition for that. And so it is, it is necessary. And furthermore, for the success of the generation of bodhicitta, renunciation is, is required. And so in this way, you have, you have uh, these, these factors uh, in coordinating support of one another. Now, now regarding uh, deity meditation, in deity meditation, there is if you look behind me there, each deity has first a lotus, and on top of the lotus there is a, a moon disc, and on top of the moon disc, often a sun, sun disc, and each of these, each of these uh, ha, is symbolic. もうこれ計算がだんだんけな、ペーマメトでいくと、そのままにやめていくと、ボディナシ、まだ計算が変わらけなやこれ、急にもあぶば。あの、こと、ピータを考えると、3万円で、ボディチャージペーマで、それで、
now you went on to describe uh, the the vajra and what arises from the vajra and that is determined by the the uh, primary deity in the tantra and uh, by its implements and mudras and is individual and unique to the various deities. Each deity arises from their root syllable and, and the root syllable of the deity uh, has to do with uh, the implements and the, uh, the deity's characteristics. <clears throat> so the deity will uh, arise on a lotus, uh, if the significance is to be shown is uh, that it is not defiled or the personage, the, the deity is not uh, defiled by, by samsaric existence. And then again, on, on top of a, a, a moon disc uh, to signify uh, the presence of uh, conventional bodhicitta. And then again, perhaps on the uh, sun disc uh, to signify ultimate bodhicitta, and then this uh, vajra that you mentioned, uh, it is instead that you might have there uh, on that, uh, on those, uh, the lotus, etc. you might have the seed syllable shri, and then shri takes the form of the aspect of chinrezi, uh, avalokiteshvara, uh, which will then radiate, and then uh, radiate light, and the light will return to that, uh, to that avalokiteshvara, uh, from the syllable tam, uh, Aryatara uh, will arise, uh, give off uh, uh, radiance, and the radiance will return to her. From whom Vajradhara will arise, and so each of these, in each of these various uh, deity practices, from the syllables which are connected in their significance to the implements and mudras of each deity, uh, you find uh, these sequences. Okay, so we will finish here for today and we'll do our closing recitation and then there's some uh, some great tea we can have we can share some tea and relax. <laughs> So there's to I mean there's food today, not just tea. Oh yes, I know. So as we begin our recitation, uh, may we bring the the virtuous activity and the blessings of having encountered the biography of Vatisha uh, to bear uh, so that uh, wherever there's unhappiness and, and sorrow, wherever there's violent conflict and, and people are suffering, uh, that that suffering may be dispelled for them. And that uh, for all those who are laboring at uh, insight into emptiness and laboring to generate bodhicitta that they may swiftly uh, generate those things and that it may continue to increase for them so we dedicate our efforts through this uh, long room prayer to those ends <laughs> Oh,
From my two corrections, vast to space, that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time. May I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose mind, wisdom, eye is blinded by a glory. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in a loving compassion for all my life. May I find the path of the complete teaching, and may I please all the Buddhas by practice. You can still feel my the source of this compassion. May I clear the darkness from the mind of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I hold with this teaching for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread or once spread at the climb, may I offer this treasure of happiness to aid all sensitive beings. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted down to his peace, and the Buddha's dreams be nourished for a long time by the father of the newly graduated path of enlightenment and the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their sons. May all human and non human beings that eliminate adversity make things conducive for practicing the excellent path, never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path raised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes an effort to act in accordance with the gentle and wise and virtuous practices, may they always be assisted by the mighty ones and the oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. <laughs> I dedicate whatever virtues I have ever collected, 
for the benefit of the teachings and of sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of the inner world of the Shine Shore. In the land preserved of the Snow Mountain, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful sinners, and gestures, and deeds of the cycles of existence to do. Just as the great Mantra Tree and Mantra Bhagavad Gita realize things that they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow their perfect example. I dedicate all these roots of virtue with the dedication praise of the best by the victorious best on one of the three times so that I might perform in order for the sacrifice to you. May the Supreme Control put it to them what is not a vision to rise to the world. And by that which has arisen not diminished, but increased more and more. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, there's some food.